Hey, happy Monday morning, everybody. Good to see you this morning. We've got uh, Jesus time kicking off here. Uh, what I believe is now we're on the, uh, this is some terrible news I heard over the weekend, the backside of the longest day of the year. So at this point, uh, from here on out, the days get shorter. So that just means it's that much more important to uh, soak up every drop of sun and make the most of every day uh, and all the daylight at hand because uh, it will be uh, waning away as the year goes on from here on out. So I hope everybody had a great weekend and uh, we are doing our Jesus time here at the kitchen table like every Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. We're going through the book of Luke and we've got ahead of us this week some different parables that Jesus is teaching and again he's in this context where there's this huge crowd of people around and he's kind of going through these chunks of lessons with his disciples um, this smaller group of followers of the way and so um, the one we're going to dig into this morning is in Luke chapter 12 and let me pray for us and uh and then jump into the text. All right, God, we love you. Thanks so much for the sunshine and the beautiful weather and for your word. Thank you for the reminders that we get in the text this morning about preparedness and being ready. Um, Lord, help us all to be people who are um, uh, at the work of um, being obedient and walking out your instructions and that whenever you return, Lord, you would catch us um, in the right way, you know, that we would be about the right things and um, our love for others and for you would be evident in what we say and what we do. We just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So Luke 12, 35 says this, uh, stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may uh, open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at a table and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, Blessed are those servants. But know this, if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. i will kind of just stop there for this morning. So, this is a, a passage that is a familiar topic for Jesus. He frequently talk to his uh, larger group of disciples, which included people around that were maybe not sure. Um, but it, it was a, a popular topic about being prepared. Like, when is the Lord going to return? Um, when is the master going to come home and um, check on the family, check on the kids, right? Check on the servants. And it reminds me a lot of uh, having kids is you would 
leave home, you know, and so when the kids got older, particularly it'd be like leave for a day or for a weekend. And there would be the, you know, sort of uh, expectations of, you know, what would be uh, how the house was supposed to be kept up and all that stuff. And, and it would be like, you know, the kids would always be wondering, like, when is when is uh, mom and dad coming home? And normally, like normal kids, they sort of wait to the last minute. And then they figure like, well, if they're going to be home, you know, back from the weekend on Sunday night at at six, then that means five o'clock. We've got to really hurry and get the house, you know, cleaned back up or whatever. And I think that's just a a reminder that we can all relate to. And it's it's just sort of human nature, right? Like if we knew the time um, when the master would return. If we knew the time when Jesus would return, it would be very easy for us to behave just like kids do when they know what time their parents are coming home. You sort of just lounge around, um, put everything off, uh, until the last minute and then try and hurry and get everything done at the last minute. The problem is sometimes you don't have time at the last minute and you get caught unprepared, right? You get caught, um, not following through on what you had agreed to do and that sort of thing. And so Jesus talks a lot with his disciples about um, being prepared, about um, being uh, the type of person who, if Jesus returns, you're caught uh, doing the right things. You're caught loving him, loving other people, and really uh, walking out your faith. And he talks in this particular passage about um, keep your lamps burning. And another passage in uh, Matthew 25, Jesus talks about what is called the parable of the uh, virgins. And it's a, a story he tells about uh, virgins who were keeping their lamps burning, waiting for the bridegroom to come. And some didn't have enough oil. So late in the day or evening, they had to go run to town to buy more oil. But by the time they returned with the oil, he had already come like they missed the boat. Right. And, and so Jesus is saying like, keep your lamps burning, have enough oil on hand. Like those were, um, those were analogies, um, that made sense to his audience. You know, for us, it might be, you might say something like, Hey, if you were telling your kids that, you know, that, Hey, we're going to be gone, uh, for a while. Um, and when we come back here, are all the things that, you know, here's the expectations. And so if you were the kids at home, then the right way to be would be like, Hey, we don't know exactly when they're going to come home. So let's keep the dishes done. Let's keep the house cleaned up. Let's make sure that the yard is mowed and, and let's keep our chores done because that way, no matter when they come home, even if they come home way early and surprise us, um, we'll have been prepared. We'll have everything done. Um, the way that they had asked us to do. And they'll, they'll find us whenever the time is, they'll find us, um, having followed through on what they asked us to do and how excited would our parents be, right? Like, and, um, everybody knows that, uh, whether you're a kid or a parent, like that sounds awesome. Like it would be awesome to come home and have your, see your kids, uh, have all their chores done early and on time and like went over and above to make sure they were ready for your return. Even if they thought you might not be coming back for a while, like how would it, how would that feel? It'd be feel great. Right. And that's the way that's kind of a, a picture to help us relate in a more modern way that Jesus is saying is like, live our lives in a way that we're prepared, that we anticipate his return, that it really could be any day. And, um, I don't want to get hung up in all the speculation and end times, uh, lottery guessing of when and where and how, and uh, like all that stuff. But the, the reality is Jesus teaches over and over and over again that he entrusts people to be an authority and to walk out following him and his kingdom and that one day he will return to rule this kingdom. And when he returns, uh, our job is to be caught being Christians. Our job is to be caught walking out our faith and really loving him and loving other people and, and have our life reflect that. And, and not get hung up in trying to speculate when that's going to be trying to solve the riddle of, well, what day could it be? What signs should we be looking for? What things should we be watching in the news? Right. All of that is based around this idea of like, you know, if we just knew the time, 
then we could wait to the last minute, right? Like that's just human nature. There's no way around it. So don't get hung up in all that stuff. Don't get lost in that stuff. Instead, just take it one day at a time and go, what would it look like if the today was the day? How would I behave? How would I treat people? What conversations would I have that maybe I've been putting off? What, um, what things would I care about? What things would I not care about, right? Um, what things would be important to me? And so those are good things to chew on and uh, reflect on as we start this uh, week, this Monday morning. So we're going to finish up uh, Luke chapter 12 this week, and then we'll be kind of just chunking along and uh, spending some time uh, in uh, Luke for a while and just learning from the text as we go and and all that stuff. So, hey, uh, let me pray for us and let's get us off and running this Monday morning. It is a beautiful day and uh, we're going to get rolling. So let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for the text. Thank you for your words. Thanks for the reminders um, and the stories that help us get a picture in our head of um, how important it is to be ready. Help us to live our lives in a way that um, is um, like some kids that love their parents um, eagerly doing their chores in advance because they're not sure when their parents are going to come home and they just want to make sure that whenever their parents come home that their parents will be pleased with them and honored. And so help us live that way as uh, kids in your family. And so, Lord, we just love you, and we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. Have a fabulous Monday. I will uh, see you all back here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for some Jesus time. Until then, have a fabulous day. Don't forget, those of you that are local, Thursday night, 6.30, Colfax Methodist Church. We've got our few live on the kind of north side of Whitman County. Uh, rally the troops and spread the word and let's get together and worship together Thursday night at 630. So see you then. Bye.